If cache is so fast, why don't we store everything into cache itself instead of a database? Hi, welcome to Design Storm. So today in this video, we will discuss about one important topic for system design and that's distributed cache. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Distributed caching is one of the important topics because this is something which is you know going to impact latency of your system. This is something which is going to decide how good your system is going to perform when you get ample requests. In order to understand distributed caching, first of all, we should understand what is cache. So understand cache as a specifically designed hardware which is able to provide response against the keys for which it has been requested in a very short span of time. When we say short span of time, that means this time is going to be way less than let's say if we have to request the same data from a hard disk or a database. First place wherein we should use a distributed cache or even a cache for that matter is one where we want to reduce network calls. In order to understand next usage of cache, understand it this way. Let's say if you have function which is doing a very good computation and this computation is dependent on the input which is coming and this input is something which keeps on recurring. Do you want to recompute it every time? No. In such cases, cache helps increasing the performance. So what we do is for the input which is coming, we compute the output ones and store it in a cache. So next time when the same input is being requested for an output, we just simply query the cache and provide back the same response. In case if you want to understand uh, the third usage of a cache, generally it is used in storing DB load. For instance, if you are requesting for a lot of data from database, the database has its own limitation in terms of time that it takes to respond back. So in order to fast scale this data retrieval, what we generally do is we introduce a cache in between. Introducing a cache in between does help if our uh, implementation of this cache is strong enough. Generally, what people follow is the 80-20 rule. So in case if you are not aware, what is an 80-20 rule? 80-20 rule means, so 20% of those requests which are being called from 80% of the times, those 20% of the requests should be captured into cache and should be responded back from cache itself. I think by now, we must have understood the three problem statements in which cache helps. One is to reduce network calls. Two, it helps avoid recomputation. Three, it also helps in reducing load from our database. I think the next question which is very obvious that should come here is, if cache is so fast, why don't we store everything into cache itself instead of a database? The first answer to this question is cost. So cache requires a special hardware like we said and the cost for this hardware which is generally SSD is way more than the normal hardware that we use for a hard drive which can be used for creating a database. So one is cost. Two, let's say if we are to store entire data into cache, do you think it is going to perform the same thing? No. Intent behind utilizing a cache or let's say intent behind making cache effective is we should store a set of data which is being requested again and again. So with that being said, cache becomes as good as its eviction policy. And in case if you are not aware about eviction policies, a good eviction policy is LRU that is the least recently used cache. And we did a video on implementation of an LRU cache back earlier. I'll post the uh, link to it in the comments. Uh, you can watch that video as well. Apart from LRU, there are several other implementations as well such as sliding window. A sliding window in case if you are aware uh, was being used by Google for implementation of caffeine cache which is very effective and this is being used like regularly from uh, Java based programmers. Now the next question is where the cache should be placed. So first thing is how about we place the cache within the server itself, the server on which the request is coming. There will be no network calls, the response will be fast enough because the communication will be in process communication instead of a network call to the cache. This will solve the purpose of latency much but consider the scenario that the server goes down. Do you think the cache will uh, survive? No, it will not. So in this case, let's say if there are four servers which are running and one of them goes down, the cache of that server goes down. Plus, we cannot expect consistency amongst cache. So server 1 will have their own cache, server 2 again will have their own cache and these caches will not be in sync with each other. So we should understand that if we are placing a cache within the server, let's say if we are utilizing something like a caffeine cache or a guava cache, 
This does solve the purpose when we are storing, let's say, a small amount of data because, of course, this cache is going to utilize the memory because these are in-memory cache that we have. And we also need to be aware that we should not have cache as a single source of truth because in case if the cache fails or if the server fails, we should be able to request for the actual data from, let's say, another service or database. Next approach to place cache is near the DB. And this is where distributed caching comes into picture. So assume the scenario where you have a server which acts as a cache and this cache is placed right in front of database. So 20% of the requests, which are, let's say, creating 80% of the traffic, queries the cache, gets the information and goes back instead of querying the actual database. Whereas the remaining will keep on querying this database and cache again will have their own eviction policy to ensure that they have the latest data and also to ensure that the requests which are being answered from the cache are uh, part of those 20% that we want to store. So this is where caches such as Redis or MemCached in comes into picture. So, so Redis as a cache is effectively used by many large firms including Google, Microsoft, etc. And Redis has been tried and tested. One thing which a lot of people does not know about Redis, though it is called a distributed cache, it works on a single thread only. So they work on a TTL and a key value pair sort of uh, implementation and it does help in you know providing a consistent response in terms of speed. Another advantage of using distributed cache or Redis is assume this as a separate server which can be scaled up or down based on the number of, number of requests which are coming. There will be no single point of failure because in case if we have a cluster which has Redis deployed then in case if one of the nodes is going down I think there will be no problem as such while uh, answering the request because as and when one node goes down the cluster will be good enough to get one more pot up. Two more concepts to understand with uh, distributed caches. One is the write through mechanism and second is write back. So in the write through what happens is let's say if there is a write which is happening the request goes to cache, cache data is updated and then the same request goes to database. Now this database request is also part of the request response cycle. So for instance from the server request goes to cache, cache then updates its data also forwards the request to database, waits for the response and once the response is back then provides back the response to the server. So this is write through. Whereas in write back what happens is request goes to cache, cache updates the data, sends back the response and then this operation of updation of data between a cache and database happens in asynchronous mode. So this is typically faster but in case if we have a transactional system wherein uh, it is very important to maintain consistency across the data, then we use write through. So, write through and write back both have their advantages and disadvantages. This is where we use dynamic sort of policies which utilizes pros of both write through and write back. So, guys, I hope that you found this concept of distributed caching helpful. In case if you want me to clarify a query regarding distributed caching, please utilize the comment section. Thank you and say design strong.